us 10 years later. Yeah. That was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're going to very shortly get a few members of the cast and crew up here for a little reflective q and It's kind of like a high school reunion tonight, so for some of you. Um, before we do, we got some Blu-rays to give out. Uh, we have Dance of the Dead DVDs, and Daily Dead has brought some horror DVDs as well. So if you know the answer to the trivia question, just raise your hand, shout it out, come on down, get your prize. We got plenty to go around. Um, so uh, let's just start off uh, with some zombie-themed questions. Uh, we're going to go back to the early 2000s. Could anyone tell me uh, the Danny Boyle movie that introduced the rage virus? Someone back in the background there? 20 days later? Come on down, get your prize. All right. All right. One down. Here we go. Okay, so uh, this movie pays tribute to uh, some other zombie movies. Uh, there is a line in here, uh, Brains, that evokes the spirit of 1980s punk rock zombie movie. Can you name it? Creature of the Living Dead. Creature of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead. There we go. Yes. Come on. You are correct, sir. There we go. And as these zombies very much reminiscent of those zombies that can drive cars and have all sorts of fun. Okay. Uh, let's see. Another zombie movie that introduced the rule of the double tap. Can anyone tell me that? Yes, sir. Zombieland. Zombieland, you are correct. Come on down. Get uh, Dance of the Dead DVD, Relive the Memories. Relive the Brown of the Living Dead. All right. So, uh, this movie stars Jimmy, the pizza delivery man turned zombie slayer. Can anyone tell me what the slogan is for the pizza delivery service that Jimmy says when he delivers a yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get some? Come, come down here and get some. Come down here and get the prize. There we go. This is a number. Okay. I have a DVD, but I didn't. We all know that Gwen wanted to go to the prom with Nash Rambler, and who wouldn't? But before she did, she did have an original date. That date got sick. What did that date get sick from? Yes, ma'am. Spinach, right? Spinach. Come on down, get your fries. Very nice. Okay. This one's a little bit more of a deeper cut. Let's see if anyone can get it. Uh, Jimmy's boss on the phone. Woo. Yes, sir. You got it. Woo. I know, I feel like you have some inside knowledge. You had your hand up pretty quick there. Okay, okay. All right. All right, a couple more for you. So, of course, the Gork Punks laid the stage, uh, but they weren't originally going to play at the prom. Can you even tell me who was the original band at the prom? What was the name of the band? You got it. Yeah. You got it. Come on down, get the prize. Court punks had to basically kill them to get the stage and destroy it. <laughs> bands can get bands can get very territorial. Okay, I think we have one more for you. Okay, so this one's a little bit of an interesting one. Uh, Lindsay was a little stressed out when she saw that Hawaiian was misspelled on the prom sign. Uh, there should be three A's. Can anyone tell me the correct way to spell Hawaiian? <laughs> you are correct. Come on down to the prize. I believe that will do it for our trivia portion because we're going to save the rest of the prizes for the prom king and queen who will crown after the Q&A. But right now, it's time for a little reunion up here on stage. We are going to bring up a few members of the cast and crew. Could we get uh, Mr. Greg Bishop up here, please? Mr. Writer, second unit photography, Joe Ballerini. All right, we're going to bring up the pizza delivery man turns on me slayer. Give it up for Jared Cousins. Yeah. She didn't need a corsage when she had a hatchet. Grace and Chadwick, everyone. All right. I feel like we should. Oh. 
There, there we go. go. I feel like we should. Uh, we've got a couple members of the quarter bunks. Let's, Let's bring them up. Blair Redford and Lucas Dill. There we go. They may or may not announce a new album or we need to retire. We'll just have to wait and see. All right. And we have other members of the cast and crew, but we're going to, for time reasons, keep it intimate here. Can we get Chandler Darby up here? Yeah! The best zombie love scene in the world. Let's get the sci fi call up here. Yes, let's get them both down here. Come on. The more the merrier. Let's go. Let's do it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Boy, that's like half the audience. Yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will be doing some audience questions, but uh, just to start off, I'm really fascinated because, you know, this is the 10th anniversary of Dance of the Day, but the movie was actually written back in the late 90s. This is almost like the 20th anniversary of when the movie was originally written. When you guys were at uh, USC, can you guys talk a little bit about writing a zombie movie when there really were no zombie movies being made, and then what made you want to bring that to life on screen? Yeah. Death grip on that. Yeah. So, so in uh, 19, I believe it was 1997, uh, I, would, I, was, I only had three friends, and it was sort of like the sci-fi club at USC, and one of them is Saul Levitz back there. He's actually one of the original members of the sci-fi club there. Yeah. And we would stay at home on a, like a, literally a Friday night, freshman year of USC, and watch old cult movies and this was back when it was like dawn of the dead it was like whoa have you seen this zombie movie this is this is i i know it's difficult to imagine there was a time when people were like you should watch dawn of the dead this zombie movie that takes place in a mall and we watched it and i was like this is so boring like these zombies like aren't doing anything and i just was really i wanted it to be a really explosive exciting funny movie and do the you know have the zombie makeout scene uh, and back in the 90s, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was cool to blow up your school. It's not so cool anymore. So like, it's fair, it's a product of the late 90s, that like rebellion and let's go save the school by blowing it up in a weird way. So a little awkward to watch it now, but you know, it's like a bit of a time capsule. And I wrote it, I was very happy with it, and then Greg read it in class instead of studying. And he said, hey man, this is pretty awesome. Uh, I should direct this. And I was like, yeah, but here's the thing. I'm, I would like to direct this. And he's like, well, no, I'm going to direct it. And I said, well, if you find the money, you can direct it. And he actually did find the money, and then he directed it. Great Bishop, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's it really weird going out this movie because nobody, nobody, like, this was pre zombie zeitgeist. Like, nobody was making zombie movies, and no, nobody would give me a chance because I was a first time feature director and nobody wanted to take a chance on a weird zombie movie by a first time feature director. Is this working? Is this on? <laughs> Up the screen. You got a hold of it. Right. Is that how? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we found uh, an awesome producer, a guy named Ehud Bleiberg, after seeing the weirdest producers in Hollywood possible. Like, we, meet the, we met with a guy who had a pirate shirt. Like, you know the pirate shirt from Seinfeld? And I was like, that's a cool shirt, man. You're not going to give us the money. <laughs> also, we met a guy in Jerry's Deli. He ran the side of his office in Jerry's Deli. We're, we're, like, like, I'm, we're like, oh, you got to leave? He's like, no, I'm going to around my 2 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, literally just as right. me. That guy's not going to get money for the zombie movie. Uh, so what I, out of that kind of frustration, I went and made a little independent movie called The Other Side. I scrapped together like 15 grand, like no money, and just uh, I was like, I'm shooting in Georgia. Uh, I uh, cast uh, my old friends Lucas Till and Blair Rappers. Blair Rappers' first movie is 19 years old. Lucas was 14? I was No, I was 11 or 12. He was a child. Whoa! He was literally a child yeah. in the movie. Uh, and uh, the, we screened it at uh, Slamdance, and this guy, Ehu Blyberg, this producer, was in the audience, and he just said, you know, uh, I want to produce your next movie. And he just wasn't, he was the one guy that wasn't full of shit. <laughs> and he gave us some money and uh, he literally wrote us a check in the office like, well, when do we need to get started? And he just handed us a check and we're off and it was the dream meeting that every it took a while. filmmaker wants to have, but it, yeah, it took like years yeah. to finally get there. 
and it's just that easy. Yeah. <laughs> it takes 10 years to incubate. Yeah. Um, before we give the audience some opportunities to ask some questions, the cast in this, it feels like Breakfast Club is zombies. Like the relationships are all there, the school dynamic, the cliques. Uh, can you just maybe all of you talk about you know building those friendships on set? Did you have a lot of time to like hang out and build those, or was it just kind of get in there and and create it as you go? I mean, it seems like such a cool like coming of age movie as much as a zombie movie. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, time went to do anything, uh, we're lucky we had time to like go to the bathroom in between some takes. I just remember the scene with uh, with Mr. Hammond. I remember I was like fighting a DEFCON 5 type cold and Greg looks at me and he's like, I need you to win this party, I need you. <laughs> and so I, I feel like I literally gave all my energy into that one scene. So uh, I don't know, it was, it was all just, we got together, we knew what we were doing and we just flew by the seat of our pants. I'll pass it on to, uh, <laughs> to Lindsay. Um, I just remember Mitch emailing me in the good old days of AOL email and um, he said hey let's get some coffee and like connect because we have to you know make out in the car together and then five minutes later he emails me back he's like never mind Greg wants it to be as awkward as possible so, <laughs> so we, we, we didn't meet until that scene <laughs> so that was kind of fun but I do remember like camping out in tents in classrooms, trying to learn to play poker. <laughs> Never I remember did, that too. But yeah, yeah. That was really fun. Sorry, are we just talking about our experiences? What was the original question? <laughs> yeah, relationships. Experiencing, you know, relationships with the cast members, the school dynamic, all that fun um, stuff. Well, I do remember me and Blair. Me and Blair have been friends for ever since. Yes, and uh, what was the game that you were playing? You had your. Uh, your grandfather's truck, and, we, and you were like, he, cause I didn't, this I was- a highly dangerous story to reveal to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I think I was 16 years old, cause I was driving Great. back and forth from school, and that's not legal, by the way, because you have to have a guardian there with you, but I have a little zigger for you. <laughs> but what was the game we play? We, 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 we shot way out in Rome, Georgia, it was in the middle of nowhere, so I, we came up with this game. I had a truck at the time, too, that I was borrowing. <laughs> and so when we, when we had to go home late at night, we would drive down the center of the road and try to hit as many reflectors in a row as you could. Because you'd hear it with the tire, you'd hear it go thump, thump, thump. And you get up to like 30, yeah, 35, because no, yeah, yeah. no one else would be on the road at 3 in the morning when this guy would rap us. <laughs> and so, yeah, you'd try to like rack up some points. That's what we'd do. So there you go. Does that count as both of our stories? Can we move on? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, I will say, I will say. <laughs> no, what, what was great about like this type of independent filmmaking when it comes to doing a high school story and doing something that like you're portraying as your best friends and you know your comrades are that close to you you don't always get it on on a big budget picture or something else it's, it's like a special type of magic you sort of jar and you harness because we're literally a lot of us fresh out of high school a lot of us in high school and then we're there shooting this thing with each other 20 hours a day. We're like, when we're not shooting, we're stuck in a, ca a weird cabin out in the woods they found, or we're stuck in like a room in an abandoned high school in a tent. Like, yeah, that's, your, that's where you're sleeping, kid. <laughs> so just, I mean, as the quarter punks, I mean, we had nothing to do. We had no parental supervision, so we would just sat around and we would, you know, bond really quickly. So she it's, actually just brought this up. <laughs> So she goes, remember when you laid some shit out on my uh, front door? Oh, no. Um, what? And it was actually, well, what it was, it was a peep. You guys know peep marshmallows, okay? So then we took those, me and you took those in coffee grounds. Oh, yeah. And then we put a pair of shorts and a peep ground up in coffee grounds. I totally forgot So that it looked like a turd. And apparently that was fun for us at that point. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure I followed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember uh, us transitioning from being awake during the day and having to uh, become night owls. And uh, at one point, I got pretty sick. And I, it was, I don't remember what time of the day, but I was like, I feel so weird. And then I threw up. And then <laughs> we were shooting pretty soon after that, and Joe picked me up. And, we had like a nice bonding moment. I think I was like, I took you to Chick fil A. Yeah. I was like, you need Chick fil A, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and right after that, you did the makeout scene with Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> Mike? 
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's been partying tonight. I think. That was drunk, pretty drunk. Um, <laughs> Jules, Mike, Mike and I stayed together for the first um, week or two of production in the same room. It was like 20 square feet, and I ended up getting the room next to him. And some drunk guy came to our door oh, the night and knocked at the door and said, "Is my wife in there?" And I was like, "What?" And he was high, and I remember just going. She's next door, and he went to Mike's room and <laughs> We actually spent a lot of time together, that's why we get along so good in the movie. We took a camcorder, I think. He gave us a camcorder when we got to set, and we spent like two days just going off on our own film and stuff, and you probably got 30 hours of BTS yeah. on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> None of it usable. None of it usable. Yeah, B-roll. B-roll. That's some behind the scenes stuff, and you get on the DVD. <laughs> I forgot about this. Uh, before we uh, get the, the prom king and queen crown, does anybody in the audience have any questions for this amazing cast and crew? Anybody got any burning questions on the mind? Yes, sir? How long was the show? 34 days? 35 days? Yeah. Was it like 40? Yeah. We did some pickups in LA, so yeah. It was about 30 ish, 40 ish. Stretch the uh, budget, stretch as thin as possible for uh, those 35 days. Yeah. Some gorilla pill making. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Anything on your mind? Yes, sir. Great. What was the most challenging part of the film for you to make? Uh, I think it was uh, the uh, the zombie launch was challenging. We we spent like uh, half a day, like just on that sequence, and it was like. You, you got to shoot this thing kind of fast, and it was there was like a lot of questions of like, you sure they can't just crawl the graves? Because like that'd be fast because we got a lot to shoot, you know. So Thank God like, you didn't. It was a schedule yeah. thing, but I, I just like I just really wanted. It's, it was a scene like he wrote, uh, you know. I remember reading it in class and just be like, we're shooting this. We, I, I don't know how. We're As if launched out of cannons, and then and then later while we were shooting, it was like Greg, we should just. You know, they should just come out of the graves. He was like, no, they're launching out of, like, cannons. And it was relentless. And that's the result of what you see. Yeah, but Pretty it was awesome. just something I'd never seen before. I, like, I'd never seen it in a movie before. So it was that, that, you know, it's like, you go to the movies. I do, anyway. When I see something I've never seen before, I get really excited. And that was something I hadn't seen in a movie, and I, I really wanted to capture. So that was probably the most challenging. Yeah, that was like Night Living Dead on Ecstasy. <laughs> 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 yeah, yes, sir? Did they blow up the power plant? That's a, that's a very interesting question. That's a twenty uh, million dollar question. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually here trying to raise money for this. <laughs> so the answer to that question. <laughs> well, I should get started tonight, so <laughs> yeah. Look out for that. Uh, yes, yeah, swing back. The real one, yes. Yeah. He should not have let us film there. We put all the bodies back. Yeah. That's fine. We put all the bodies back and we're done. It was very easy for you guys to film it at the cemetery, if I remember correctly, right? You were... Yeah, we shot we shot the film in a little town called Rome, Georgia. And uh, they never had a movie shoot there before. And I think they've gotten wiser since we've been there and like they're up to prices. I think we got the, the cemetery, I think we got that location for like ten dollars because it was like the price of the paperwork to like file or whatever it was. They were just excited and they're like, cool, can we be zombies? And like I don't know if you've ever shot anything in LA. That does not happen here <laughs> at all. Uh, but yeah it was like that became kind of our back lot and we yeah. just uh, we just shot in the town and it was like we couldn't have made it without them. I mean they they came out in droves and really, you know uh, really made it something. Yeah. Awesome. Any uh, any other questions? Anything on your mind while everyone is out here? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes, ma'am. What was the biggest challenge? Got another challenge. Got another uh, challenge question. Plenty of challenges. Acting challenges. <laughs> yeah. Stunts. Any Wait, scary uh, music stunts? Music for the quarter punks? Was it? Oh, oh yeah. actually, I I will pipe in. I actually put this on my Instagram the other day. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just... Actually, I think, I think you're a little younger than me. Yeah, I am. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I was going to say I was the youngest guy there, which isn't true. And, um, and I remember going in to play bass, and I'm like... Bum, 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 bum. And then uh, they go, yeah, hey, can you uh, turn a little bit? 
I'm like, okay. But the camera's over there. Okay. <laughs> Turn completely Keep around. Keep going. Keep going. It's like, what? Yes, yeah, it's just like Jim Morrison. It actually turns out it's really bad faking bass. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my biggest acting challenge. Well, look, in all fairness, it was, unfortunately, it ruined some of the, the mystery of it, but it, it was all fake. <laughs> Paul played Lee, anything. The is here. You Paul didn't sing. I, it wasn't my voice. I know it's. Well, where, where's Lee's my voice? voice? There he is. Hey. There he is. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Our powers combined. It didn't even cost. I would just tell Blair like, when, if you like, you gotta lip sync it good. If you miss it. I gotta cut away from you, bro. <laughs> it's all the motivation all right, it takes. Camera. Like you gotta nail it, or you ain't on camera. It's pretty good. Pretty good. We've got time for one more question. If anyone's got it, uh, yes, sir. Everyone on the panel, what's next? Wow. That's ten questions, bro. Like a beer. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. dance the dead too. If we yeah. Cross our fingers, right? Woo. Good answer. Awesome. Well, uh, we, uh, out with a script now uh, by the writers of Super Dark Times. Uh, we developed the story together. It's a, um, a supernatural home invasion movie uh, with uh, Craig Perry and uh, and uh, Sheila Taylor from uh, Practical Pictures, who did uh, Final Destination. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that'll get made. He has a new book. Uh, yeah. Pacer's Guide to Monster Hunting, June 26th, Woo! book two. Yes. Coming out. Basically, it's this movie, but with like 13 year old kids fighting monsters and sex zombies. So it's, yeah, book two. So thanks, guys. Um, I don't know, I'm just going to keep working on myself. Get ready for the 20 year anniversary. Yeah! Do <laughs> <laughs> some music on the side. Who knows? Yeah. World's my oyster. He's an amazing yeah. singer and dancer, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prove it. Oh, you want to show some moves? <laughs> I'll sing right, some more. I'll, I'll, I'll sing. 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 Uh, what is it? Uh, We're running with the shadows <laughs> of the night. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I'll fill you guys in. But, uh, 
I have a, a feature script we're getting produced right now, so you're going to hear the kidnapper side of the story. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the memories are flooding back from Rome. Uh, um, Lionsgate Films, a uh, movie called I Can Only Imagine. It comes out on the yeah. we, uh, we weren't expecting it to do so well, but we, uh, we reached uh, the third highest uh, music biopic of all time behind Walk the Line and uh, uh, Straight Outta Compton. The wow. Yeah. 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 Who's your uncle? Who's your uncle? Who's your uncle? All right, so now to the zombie prom king and queen portion, as promised. If, if you dressed up, can you come on down to the stage? If you dressed up in yeah. zombie wow. or prom attire, can you come on down? Woo. So we got a few. They're about to win. <laughs> <laughs> they are in prom attire. There are bite marks. Someone just make themselves bleed really quick. Come down. All right. <laughs> I see some blood. I see some presses. I see some eyes. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's just give it up for these fine folks. Yeah. 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 This is how you watch them today. All right. Well, it looks like we have a prom king. Game show style plaza meter. What's your name? Annie. All right. For Annie. Um, yeah. Your name? Melanie. And this is also how they sent me to Walmart to buy stuff for yeah. the